Hey everybody, and Tony here with a tribute to one of the most heartwarming, tear-jerking, and absolutely amazing Christmas special to ever grace any superhero show. I'm of course talking about Comfort and Joy from Justice League, which premiered on December 13, 2003. I mainly heard about this through passing ever since I was an 11 year old boy. And I did watch a few snippets of it, but I thought it was just really good overall. Now as an adult that I have watched this entire episode, I have to say that it was more than a sum of its parts. It was able to take me on a feels trip with certain characters, especially John Jones, and even to some extent The Flash and Ultra Humanite. And this particular Christmas special left a great impact on me. The story is divided into three segments. One segment belongs to the Green Lantern and Hawk Girl. The other belongs to John Jones, AKA the Martian Manhunter and Superman. And the other one belongs to Flash. Now when it comes to John, AKA the Green Lantern and Shaira, AKA Hawk Girl, their chemistry with each other is absolutely brilliant. They start off the special with snowball fights and with Shaira feeling a little bit befuddled as to why humans like John would celebrate something as so wonderful as Christmas. This is also parallel to John Jones' bewilderment as to why someone like Clark Kent, birth name Kalel, would ever celebrate something like Christmas. Because with Clark, he too was an alien from out of space until the Kents adopted him and called him his own. So there is a genuine connection to both Superman and Martian Manhunter. Not only are they aliens from outer space with a lot of really cool powers, but they understand each other. They're able to empathize with each other, which this episode manages to bring out. Empathy is pretty much the key emotion that I feel not only for John Jones, but also for Clark Kent. And I felt like their story was the strongest out of the three. Now in terms of Flash, he's basically quite the hit with the kids, so much so that they look up to him as a role model, and he even serves as sort of like the resident Santa, so much so that a kid asks for one of the very famous duck toys in which it can also move around with a lot of farting noises and even say words like poop and all that stuff. So the Flash does his damnedest to get that particular toy. However, in the States, it ended up being sold out. His only resolve is to go to Japan to get the final duck toy from a very kind and meek toy owner. And after all is said and done, he gets himself into a scuffle with Ultra Humanite. Speaking of scuffles, aside from John's and Shaira's heartwarming and absolutely entertaining snowball fight, and even when John also tries to show Shaira many things you can do with the snow, like build a snowman, Shaira then convinces John that she celebrates the holidays in her own special way by getting herself into a big battle royale of a brawl in a bar in her home planet. So John and Shaira hightail it out of Earth and end up in a planet that Shaira knows all too well. And they even get themselves in a bar where Shaira is really friendly with all the people in that party girl type of way. And of course, she is also quite the troublemaker but a very entertaining one at that. And I have to go out of my way and say that I really love Green Lantern, AKA John, and Hawk Girl, AKA Shaira, as a couple. These two have amazing chemistry, and one can tell that they are pretty much meant for each other. And while we're talking about shipping, aside from me shipping Green Lantern and Hawk Girl, 
I also love it when Superman and Wonder Woman are together. They're pretty much two of my most favorite couples in the Justice League world. I know that the fanboy in me has been squealing all the way through, but that's just how I feel. I definitely love Green Lantern and Shaira as a couple as much as I love Superman and Wonder Woman as a couple. As I stated before, John and Shaira pretty much make their segment work, mostly because their relationship is budding and you can definitely tell that Shaira is really trying to understand John's ways of celebrating the holidays in his own special way. And one can really see that these two are starting to get a lot closer than one thinks. And going back to Superman and John Jones, I absolutely love his adoptive parents. The way they were able to accept Jean as one of their own is absolutely amazing. They're fully aware that yes, their adoptive son came from another planet and he's not really their biological son, but they still accept him as their own flesh and blood. And that's the same treatment they also give to Jean Jones. They were able to accept Jean as almost a part of the family and almost like a brother to Superman and even like a second son to them, even though Jean is still kind of befuddled and even though he's still feels really weird around them and at times hurt because I can completely empathize with Jean of how he feels in this particular situation. You come in into a strange environment where everything is so new to you but you still feel so confused and you kind of wonder what is this all about? Is there anything that's concrete? If Is there anything that is of reason? And at times it feels so strange to him but after a while, he warms up. And my most favorite scene with him is when he passes by a chapel during midnight mass, and then he hears a choir singing, it came upon a midnight clear. And that scene alone almost brought me to tears. However, if there is one issue I have with the transition is that you have one scene that's almost about to make me bawl like a baby, and then comes this battle royale of a brawl happening between John, Shaira, and a whole bunch of space thugs. I mean, what on earth was that? It felt like I was in a major mood whiplash, which killed the overall impact of that former scene. But despite all that, I still have to say that that particular scene almost left me to tears and it made me really feel for the guy. And going back to Flash, while he got himself into a brawl with Ultra Humanite, they end up exchanging punches. All the while, the Flash accidentally falls on that new toy, and it's pretty much up to Ultra Humanite to not only fix the toy, but also improve it. And this is also where the whole eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth comes into play, especially when it comes to Ultra Humanite's philosophies. When the Flash landed a shower of punches onto Ultra Humanite, Ultra Humanite basically responds by knocking him on the head before improving and fixing the toy. And the other highlight of this is what happens to the toy. The duck toy proceeds to speak in an eloquent voice and tells the story of the Nutcracker, all the while a segment of the dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy, or Clara's solo, comes into play. And I really love that little scene. I basically found myself dancing that particular piece of music. And at times I also imagine the likes of Gelsey Kirkland, Larissa Lejnina, and many other great Claras dancing that particular segment. And even though Ultra Humanite did find himself in jail, the Flash in return gives him a Christmas present, which may be simple, but it actually proved to kind of warm his heart. Considering the fact that Ultra Humanite did start off as very cynical and almost unapproachable and very cold-hearted. But because of that one deed that the Flash did for him, 
he managed to have a little bit of warmth in his heart. And that's what I love about this particular Christmas special. You get to see the superheroes being just like everyday people with everyday struggles that you can relate to. I definitely feel for Jean's pain. I feel the love that Superman has with his adoptive family. I feel so invigorated when the Flash is about to give that duck toy to some of the kids in school. I feel a great connection with the Green Lantern and Hawkgirl in terms of their ever-budding relationship. And of course, I feel the genuine friendship that Superman and Jean Jules, aka the Martian Hunter, have. This is essentially a character-driven holiday special, and it managed to exceed in flying colors. And I'm sure that a great number of you have also watched Comfort and Joy from Justice League, so please, I would like to know in the comments below what were your most favorite moments in this particular Christmas special. Well, that's all for now. And now we're heading back into the comedic territory. But this time, it's a little bit of a dark and, dare I say, creepy type of comedy found in Invader Zim. And we're going to take a look at the most horrible Xmas ever. So until then, happy holidays, everybody.